From scenes like this, old Scotia's grandeur springs that makes her loved at home, revered abroad. The words are Robbie Burns, but the sentiment is a familiar one to every Scot. Summer in Scotland means rare bonny days that warm the heart of every sporting Scot. So it's Hootman and Lassies. Our hearts are in the Highlands, and that's where we long to be. Pleasure-bound trains are filled to capacity. Bus lines offer special excursion trips over the picturesque countryside, while the rugged sportsmen choose to travel under their own power. Golf is an old and favorite game. Almost everyone plays. Scotland's best-known golf course is St. Andrews. While golfers search for lost balls, another group of hunters motor up to the hunting lodge to stalk the wily stag. The guide says he's seen a big fellow roaming about near the misty summit. and they begin the long climb upward, beyond the grazing land. How now, brown cow? He went that away. I see the beastie now. Good shooting, lad. Aye, that's a fine trophy to hang on your wall at home. There's room here for seven hats if you put it in the hallway. and rivers of Scotland abound in fish, game enough to test the skill and patience of the expert. Fly fishing for salmon demands a sharp eye, but Jock's method is to close in and step on his fish. Mac, however, prefers the dry comfort of a boat. A highlight of the summer sports season is the annual sheepdog trial. The contestants are the canine shepherds of the Highland countryside, locally called border collies. This is a great day for both dog and owner. These dogs are taken in hand from the time they're weaned and trained from early puppyhood. In the beginning, the collie is taught to work with the barnyard fowl. They are trained to run over the roughest terrain and to leap effortlessly over obstacles. They are then sent into the fields to herd the sheep and soon prove themselves intelligent and obedient to their master's instructions. Fully trained, they are ready to compete against the other dogs of the same breed. Timekeeper and judges are ready. The owner whistles, but Jim runs out too eagerly. He is told to halt. So the obedient collie lies down in order not to frighten the sheep by too rapid movement and cause them to scatter. On signal, Jim rises and goes forward.
According to the contest rules, the collie must not lay hold of a sheep. The master whistles while his dog works. Jim herds the black-faced sheep across the field, barking his own orders. Even Jim's rival thinks it was a good show. Across the moors in another part of the highlands, the annual gathering of the clans opens with the raising of the Scottish flag. Descendants of the ancient clan chieftains swing along in their colorful kilts. Not every Scot is entitled to wear the kilt. This rite is reserved for the Highlanders of the North and West and natives of the Hebrides. All of these people, however, make up only one-fifth of Scotland's population. Prizes for the winners of the various contests are displayed. The games begin with singing by groups within each clan. Now the muscle men go into action. The first event is the hammer throw, a sport whose origin dates back to the earliest Scottish wars. A resourceful Scot is handy with a small boulder. This event is called tossing the caber, and it involves the use of a middle-aged tree, or caber if you prefer. The object is to carry the caber upright to the tossing line and throw it so that it lands end over end. Easy now, up and over. You see lads, it's all in the know-how. No gathering of the clans is complete without some hotly contested wrestling matches, although this looks more like an adagio dance. Well, let's dance then. Many Scots are sailors or fishermen, and their children learn the hornpipe almost as soon as they can walk. These lads show off their fancy footwork in the Highland Fling. Lassies are also well represented. Contestants are judged for grace, rhythm, and the variety of steps they perform. Team contests bring out pairs of lads and lassies. The big feature of any Scottish dancing event is the sword dance. Here, judgment is based on agility and lightness of foot. Yet nothing stirs the true Scot more than the sound of skirling bagpipes. When the games and contests come to an end, the bands mass and parade across the playing field. Music lifts the spirits of winner, loser, and spectator alike. The ceremonies close as the bands play a rousing tribute to the men and women of the clans, gathered together for one day to perpetuate the colorful customs and great traditions of these sporting Scots.